I'm going to go ahead and start the recording. It started. Okay, welcome everybody to the community meeting for West 7th Street project from University Drive to Trinity River Bridge. My name is Renat Rikhani. I'm the project manager with the City of Fort Worth Transportation and Public Works Department. I'd like to give a warm welcome to all of the residents and business owners that have joined us today, um, as well as to give a special thanks to Council Member Ann Zeta for um, being in attendance tonight. Council Member, would you like to say a few words before we begin? Good evening, everyone. I'm just here to answer any questions that anyone might have from me and to hear the presentation. Thank you. So we'll begin with some introductions. Like I said, I'm Renat Rikhani. I'm the project manager um, on the city side. And I'd also like to introduce our uh, design project manager, Crystal Buster from HDR Engineering. We also have our contractor, Jason Cherian from Reyes Group, as well as our city inspector, Lori Pitts. Um, their contact information as well as mine is listed on this um, slide and it can be provided later on if you need it. So the agenda for today, we're gonna go over, you know, the project location and description, um, what the project entails, a little bit about the scope. And then we'll get into uh, the schedule, what the construction duration is going to look like, as well as the construction phasing. And finally, we'll talk about some temporary impacts that um, you guys as residents and business owners might see during construction. And finally, at the end, you'll have a chance to ask any questions that you may have, um, whether it be in the chat box or towards the end. So the project is located on West 7th Street in the Cultural District of Fort Worth. The limits on the, um, on the left are University Drive and it goes all the way towards the um, Trinity River Bridge on the east. So the intersection at University Drive and West 7th is not included in the project. So the improvements will include paving, paving pavement markings and signage. Uh, the project will also include intersection improvements. Um, hopefully to enhance the corridor and make it more pedestrian friendly. So at this time, I'm gonna bring up the, um, we have an exhibit to hopefully make the improvements a little bit more clear for everybody. So at first I wanna point out that we're going to in be installing a signal at Norwood Street and West 7th, which is where my cursor is. Uh, the existing condition of that intersection currently is a um, one-way stop controlled intersection. We'll also be installing a signal at Woolery Street, which is here. Woolery Street is at the easternmost entrance of, uh, into Montgomery Plaza. So by installing these two traffic signals, we're aiming to uh, reduce pedestrian crossing distances and hopefully improve ADA access throughout the corridor by installing curb ramps as well. Uh, 
Additionally, we're going to enhance the um, aesthetic quality of the corridor by installing streetscaping, such as uh, stamped colored concrete, as well as installing landscaping in the median, um, the parkways, as well as some of the raised uh, bikeway buffers. Can you please mute yourself? Thank you. There's also going to be improved illumination all along West 7th to increase visibility for pedestrians and as well as drivers. And finally, the project will encourage um, multimodal use of the street by maintaining on street parking. So there's some parallel parking along the eastbound side of West 7th that we're going to maintain after construction. Uh, we're also improving and widening the sidewalks, uh, as well as, as I mentioned, adding buffered bike facilities. Going back to the PowerPoint. There will be some temporary impacts during construction. Um, some of those are the detours that will be put in place for bicyclists as well as pedestrians. So there will be proper signage up leading bicyclists and pedestrians to the proper route. There's also going to be temporary bus stop uh, relocations just during construction and the locations will be close to the current bus stop. There will be some on street parking closures along the eastbound side of West 7th. So that'll be the southern side. And there will also be some short term driveway closures. So the existing condition of West 7th, the way you see it now is um, 11 foot travel lane with a 12 foot turning lane in the center, as well as bike lanes on each side. And like I mentioned, um, parallel parking on the eastbound side of West 7th. So it looks something like this, is a, a visual of that, of the existing condition. And in the proposed condition, um, there are two configurations. One is the proposed configuration with, with parking, with parallel parking. So um, in this instance, we'll have two travel lanes in each direction with the landscaped median bike lanes and parallel parking. And then we'll have the raised um, bike buffer on one side. And in the other configuration in areas without parallel parking, we'll have raised uh, bike lane buffers on each side, separating the bicyclists from the traffic lanes. And this will mostly be from uh, Foss Street to the railroad. And it will look very similar to this. So you have the two travel lanes in each direction the bike, the bike lane closest to the sidewalk, as well as the um, the parking lane, and those will be separated by a buffer. So the project schedule, uh, we expect construction duration to be about 300 calendar days. We anticipate to start in late March 2021 but that will be pending the reopening of the White Settlement Bridge. So the White Settlement Bridge is serving as a relief corridor into downtown during construction of West 7th. Um, and it's currently in construction right now. And this project cannot begin until the White Settlement Bridge opens. So that's why there's a bit of a um, ambiguous start date because we have to wait for the white settlement bridge to open before we can begin construction. 
So we're anticipating and expecting the White Settlement Bridge to be open in late March. That way we can begin construction in late March. And that, that way it'll put us at um, completing construction about January or February of 2022. The construction phasing, um, the project will be constructed in four phases. So at first we'll begin on the east downside of West 7th on the outside lane. Then we'll be moving into the outside lane on the west downside, so directly opposite. And then construction will move into the uh, two inside lanes, the eastbound and westbound inside lanes. And then we'll do the permanent striping and signage along the street. Temporary impact that you can expect as residents and business owners or visitors to the area. So this area is very popular for bicyclists and pedestrians alike just because of um, its proximity to Trinity Park. So that's why it's very important for us to put detours in place to allow bicyclists and pedestrians to be rerouted to the um, safest areas for them and to be out of the way of construction. So we'll be doing that for both bicyclists and pedestrians. Like I mentioned, we're coordinating with um, Trinity Metro to relocate uh, bus stops temporarily and those bus stops will be located near the current bus stops to avoid any confusion. <laughs> You can expect a typical pedestrian detour to look something like this. So our contractor is planning on rerouting pedestrians to the opposite side of the street, wherever construction activities are taking place. So they'll cross, walk until construction activities have ended for that um, block, and then they'll cross over on the other side. And that is it for my presentation. I will open it up to questions now. I know we received some questions in the chat box. I have a question. This is retail. Were the developers and owners of the left bank project with the Tom and the retail? Um, when do you anticipate the intersection and the traffic lights at rerouting of the intersection state and to begin and complete? So that project is currently in construction and we anticipate um, those construction activities to end sometime in April. And then along the West 7th corridor, my second question is, will the parallel parking change or be modified on West 7th, specifically between Staten and the West 7th bridge? And then you might expand on it west of the newly created intersection at Staten. So the parking from Museum Way to the bridge on the southern side. When you say changing, I mean, we're changing it because we're putting a bike lane nearest to where the sidewalk is and we're shifting it over, but it's not changing in terms of parking spaces or availability. Will, will the bus stops be changing in any way along the West 7th corridor and the dash? I will defer to JT Aldridge, which he is the, he was the project manager while the project was in design and he should have an answer for us on that. 
Well, to be honest, I, I don't have a good answer. I, I don't think that we're changing the bus stops from uh, from where they are out there today. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so will the street be called Staten or will it continue to be named Museum Way where it ties into Staten on the north side? I do have a good answer for that one. It will definitely continue to be called Museum Way south of West 7th, and that'll be state and north of West 7th. Okay. And then one last question. I can't remember, what, what is the uh, uh, capital budget on this project? What will the total cost be of the project? So construction will be about five million dollars on West Seventh. Do you know the total, JT? I want to say the total city project budget is about eight million. It's either eight or eight and a half. Okay, and then um, does any? I know you mentioned uh, you didn't have an exact date. But has the TRVA given you any type of estimated date when the White Settlement Bridge would be completed and open for access? So the White Settlement Bridge is supposed to be open by the end of March. Okay. That's the anticipated completion date and there, it's supposed to be open to the public by the end of March. There's a question. I did have one question come in through chat as well. Um, um, when we close the sidewalk, how will we notify someone who uh, is blind that it's a closure? And how wide will the temporary sidewalks be? And um, can we go into a little more detail about temporary bus stops? And are they going to be accessible? So during construction, if there is a pedestrian detour on a sidewalk and um, it's not open to pedestrians, then we will have signage in place and barricades signifying that you're supposed to cross at a certain intersection. But we will not have any audio capable devices, if that's the question. And then the second part of that question, how wide will the sidewalk be? This is Eva Bonilla and I ask those questions because I work with the disabled persons and I know that they used uh, that area a lot. On a meeting the 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 sorry, what what was that last? I didn't hear that last thing. I said this is Eva Bonilla and I asked those questions because I work with the persons with disabilities and I know that they use these bus stops and sidewalks and the, that's why I asked about the how wide they would be and would the uh, bus stops be accessible and I'm mostly thinking about the disabled persons and the and also there's blind people that use those bus stops so we, we will coordinate with oh, I'm sorry Go ahead, yeah, we will coordinate with Trinity Metro to see what we can do about, uh, I don't know if the current bus stops are accessible, um, but we will coordinate with the Trinity Metro on the location of those temporary uh, bus stop so that we can make it, you know, um, more accessible. And then it's, uh, 
if anybody is aware of, you know, anyone that's visually impaired that we might need to, you know, let them know when when certain sidewalks are going to be closed and so on and so forth, please let us know. If you would coordinate with Al Henderson too, because that's who I uh, volunteer with. Okay, we will be certain to do that. Okay, yeah, I have his contact information. This is my wish. I'm with the parents for me with disabilities. There's no way to know when someone will be coming to the area. So there's no real good way to coordinate with the vision impaired on any other disability. And that is, I work with Mike too, and he just got through speaking and he serves, I was serving with him on the Human Relations Commission, and he's also with the Mayor's Committee uh, on People with Disabilities. And uh, if you didn't understand him, there, right now there isn't e even a good way to go through there with people that have any uh, impairment. And so what's going to happen when it's completely done? Is there going to be better access? Oh, absolutely. Yes, the project, all of the intersections will be uh, accessible. No, no. My dad was doing construction. There's no way of knowing who may come through there. So there's no way to coordinate with individuals. You never know who may um, that way, that one trying to say. As, as part of the improvement in the project, all of the, I mean, all the, the entire corridor is going to be uh, ADA accessible. We just want to clarify that. I, Mike was saying was that right now there's no way to coordinate with anybody that's going to be using it during the uh, temporary uh, streets, during temporary constructions, because we don't know who's going to be using it. So there's no way to contact them to find out who's, you know, what blind person or what person on a wheelchair is going to be using it because there's no way to coordinate that or contact them. So there will need to be something, uh, hopefully, that makes it accessible during the construction for the people that do use it because we don't know how to contact them. Right, Mike? That's what you were saying? Yes, Thank you. So, so we will we will reach out to Al so he can give us some input on how to how to improve that situation. So, so just to add to that, all projects should be maintaining ADA accessibility throughout their construction um, to the greatest extent possible. You know, obviously, if we are constructing uh, a a new ramp, it, it would be hard to. Um, may not attain access to that specific ramp, but that is kind of part of our, our planning procedures to ensure accessibility to the greatest extent possible, given construction. And Mike, this is Jeremy Williams, the city's pedestrian bicycle planner. We've had some really great discussions with Al on how to make this better, and Ronak has been uh, really proactive. Uh, I, just to give her some kudos there, to make this accessible. So we are gonna definitely stay on top of that to make sure that this is an accessible street for everyone of all abilities. Thank you, Jeremy, but I'm just concerned about when it's under construction. 
No, what is it? What is it? I can see it. Oh, it's okay, honey. I'm I'm listening to a meeting right now. If you're not asking a question, can you please mute yourself? So I'm going to try to get some of these other questions in the chat box. I've got a question. I don't know if I'm out of line here or not, but this is Richard Gordon. I'm store director with Tom Thumb. Uh, can you rewind a little bit uh, on the four phases of this uh, street project um, and uh, kind of, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I had a hard time catching the inbound outside lane of the west side of the, <laughs> I got oh, a little, okay. little mixed up there. Uh, can you kind of slow down a little bit and there is there any way that you can give me the time frame of each one of those phases so i'll go through it again um but i will say that it's going to be difficult you know giving you a time frame of when exactly the contractor is going to be where um because I, you know we don't dictate the means and methods of the contractor things might change during construction so it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly when they're in the construction duration, they're going to be, um, you know, on which side of the street. Okay. Uh, so w they're going to start on the southern portion of West 7th on the outside lane. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you said the eastbound side was going to be first. Yeah. So the that's the southern. southern okay, that that is the southern. That's the exactly. southern. Side. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. where I guess I had to so think that's the about eastbound my direction. Side. And then they'll be working on the outside lane of that side. Then moving over across the street to the north side, which is the westbound lane. So they'll be working on the outside lane there. And then they'll be moving inward to the two eastbound and westbound inside lanes. So they'll be doing the pavement, curb and gutter and landscaping on in that portion. And then they'll be doing permanent striping along the entire street. Okay. Uh, lastly, we have to... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, lastly, the last question would be, uh, uh, would be the I hate to be, I hate to sound uh, like it's all about me, <laughs> but how it affects me at Tom Thumb regarding driveway closures you mentioned. Uh, do you have any information on that? So you have two entrances into Tom Thumb, correct? Yeah, we have the, we have the one that's on the uh, westbound side west i mean the west side of the building right by the railroad track right and then we have the museum way uh staten so we'll be maintaining one entrance at all times so there will be access into um tom thumb oh. now, I, okay. I, I, that, I, that sometimes is a concern regarding uh you know, 18 wheeler deliveries and stuff is the reason. Is there any way of, of finding out the time frames or when, how far in advance we would know the closures of maybe that driveway right by the railroad tracks? I can, I can have, um, I can coordinate and, with you. So if you can email versa. me, yeah, if you email me, I can work with a contractor to make sure that you're aware whenever, um, there will be any impact to your driveway. Okay. Either one of those closures are going to be very impactful to my business. We've, we've okay. also asked the contractor to notify business owners at least two weeks in advance when they're going to be working, you know, okay. along the front end of the business. Good. That's did good you say two weeks in advance on that notice? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, my name's Ashley King. I work uh, for uh, Wendy's franchisee. So we're right there at Norwood and 7th. And we also have the two, uh, the two curb cuts 
into our facility and uh i was about to bring up the uh the, the semi delivery until the gentleman from tom thumb did so uh that's a big concern for us because we also have a very narrow uh a very narrow way to get around and in, into our area for an 18 wheeler So if you want to okay, the contractor will be, you know, in contact with any residents and businesses in the area, like Will mentioned prior to construction. And if there's any special coordination that needs to happen in terms of access or driveways, um, then we can definitely work with you and see, you know, what we can do. Okay, one more question. Does it go without saying or do we need to uh to ask for one of our entrances to stay open. If you have two entrances, more than likely one will stay open. You know, we will not close down two yep. entrances at the same time. There will always be one yeah. entrance. Yeah. yeah, it's just there's no roadway in front of our building. So for people to do, do a drive through exit, it's so the setback is so close that I just don't know how we're going to do it, but. Okay, somebody asked, um, what is a buffered bike lane? So a buffered bike lane is basically a bike lane with a raised landscape median right adjacent to it to um, kind of keep them out of the traffic lanes and make it safer. This is Stephen Koslick. I, I joined late. Is there a, a drawing that depicts the improvements that, of the bike lane, et cetera? Are you, are you asking if I have a, an exhibit showing the bike lane? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I do. I do. Um, if you are able to either get in touch with me, I don't know if you were able to see my contact information on here. I did. But I you did. will have a recording of this, um, this presentation. So please just email me and I can send it out to you. Can I jump in here with another question? Sure. This is, this is Lisa, and I'm the uh, asset manager for the uh, South of Seven apartments that are located at the corner of Seven and Museum Way. And um, my question, and I haven't, I've, I've been trying to get into the meeting since it started, but for some reason, um, my browser is blocking it, so I wasn't able to see all the attachments. But um, my question is, is that we had a a really nice meet in the middle uh, there on the museum way, and that's uh, going away. What is happening in front of the Tuies area? That area, um, you know, which used to be the roadway is now being converted back to parkland and it will be landscaped. It will be landscaped. So that's nothing that uh, we would be responsible for. I'm not sure if there's an agreement between um, the parks department and you guys to do any maintenance of that area. JT, are you aware? Well, we had the maintenance of the median in the middle. That's why I had a bunch of, um, uh, before, I, before I, I just happened to show up and all of a sudden everything's being torn down and for some reason I wasn't made aware, don't know how that happened, but it did. Um, so yes, we were responsible for the interior median that is now being removed. 
Yeah. So, so when uh, when that area gets uh, when the road gets gets moved over and that area gets com gets completed, like Ronak said, that, that that little small area there will be maintained by the park and recreation department. So the parks department will maintain that. So yeah, you you won't be responsible for that little area. I have two questions. You just said Park and Rec will be with Barn Football. Right now, I get so you trees that are not cut that should be six foot from the ground. So how often will they maintain this? I think your question was if parks will be maintaining the landscaping no, on this project? No, no. no. I say right now you have landscaping like trees that are too low where it should be six, six feet from the ground. How often will they maintain? the trees and the other vegetation. Well, how often will the Parks Department be maintaining the trees and vegetation in the area? Yes, because we have tree limbs that are not cut right now. Hi. So the park. Uh, Ronak, this is Lori. Um, I also uh, think Mike is saying that the trees are supposed to be, there should be a six foot clearance from the ground um, and it's not being maintained. Uh, so that I would imagine is he's concerned. Um, if I'm incorrect, just let me know. But I think that was a concern he mentioned. Um, so, yes. Okay. So we'll we'll be in touch with the parks department about that. If there are any areas of concern, we can get in touch with them. Can I go back to the Chewy's area? Is that um, area going to um, that additional uh, small parking parks and recreation area? Will that coincide come up to where the the Chewy's walk is in front is that going to extend there's not going to be a gap right no okay so, so it'll meet kind of wherever the improvements of what seven end okay Can you please answer my question So the parks department maintains vegetation and trees on an as needed basis. And I think they do have a maintenance schedule, but I can't tell you what that is. If I can find out for you, if I can reach out to them and ask them, you know, what their maintenance schedule will be of the vegetation in this area. So my question is, if they can't, Maintain them by add more to it. Why add more vegetation to the area if they can't maintain what's already there? 
Well, vegetation and landscaping was always a big part of this project from the inception. Um, so I, I imagine that's I can't hear you. Can everybody else please mute themselves? I was saying that vegetation was always part of this project from its inception. So I imagine it's, you know, important to everybody involved. If there are concerns about maintenance, um, whether it be on this specific corridor or, um, you know, near Staten, then we can definitely get in touch with parks to make that known to them. Uh, but as for the landscaping, like I said, it is a big part of this project um, and it has been since its inception. Mike, if I can cut in, this is Jeremy again, um, pedestrian bicycle planner here. Uh, the, the landscaping was a big discussion at the inception of this project and that's why it's being included in the bond program is that we have a commitment for the um, the maintenance of that, that landscape. So we do have a commitment from the Parks Department on maintaining that landscape throughout the corridor. If, if we had not, it wouldn't have been included. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. I'm just making sure because whenever you back trees and whatever else, it's Seeing that it's never maintained. So. I hear you there, and not everybody gets your humor. So, <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. If if, if y'all are finished, um, did I hear Doug? There's a Doug on the call. Is that Doug Warzak? Is Doug Warzak on this call? Doug doesn't work for the city of Fort Worth anymore. Okay, I thought you'd mentioned a Doug. So this is West Miller. I'm with the Left Bank Project. And at one time when this project was announced or proposed, and we had some charrettes a couple years ago, I came to the city and we had some meetings with Doug and some other um, city officials in that we, we wanted to know uh, what the city was doing to um, create an access point off of Greenleaf, where Greenleaf ties into White Settlement under the bridge to get our residents within Left Bank. And now that we have over a thousand units of residential units, it was ever so important to get access. Uh, did you ever have any discussions about getting access as you come out of our project to the north to access White Settlement, especially uh, westbound off of White Settlement? What preparations were made or what designs uh, were discussed or talked about, and is that uh, on the drawing board? And now that now that these improvements are going to take a year, I think it's ever so important as we're somewhat hamstrung from the railroad because we can't cross that railroad. Uh, we'll need some access to White Settlement to the north. Was that talked about? And and if not, can we uh, start some discussions? We gave several designs to the city uh, to access White Settlement from Greenleaf. I'll, I'll let you talk. So those, those of us that are here, I'm, I'm not aware of those conversations, sir, and it's not part of the scope of this project. Um, we, we will see if we can find an answer to that. You see what I'm saying? Where Carroll, where Carroll and University give relief to the north, we don't have any relief to the north. I just want to make sure everybody understands what I'm, what I'm So asking. this is Lauren Freer. I'm the assistant director for capital delivery. And really what that sounds like is a, a potential bond project program. Um, you know, we're, we're currently in the middle of planning for 2022. Uh, I believe I have seen that in, in terms of the project list, but, you know, I think it's important to keep in mind our project list is, is 50 plus projects. You know, each of these projects generally have a budget of around 10, 10 million plus. 
Um, in the arterials, you know, will usually arterial slash connectors will usually have a a total program budget uh, of about a hundred million dollars. Um, so we're still very much going through that that vetting and, and racking and stacking process with all of those projects. Um, so that's something I think we can talk off online about. Sure, I'm happy to. I just wanted to bring that up because I think it's important for anybody who lives east including our shopping center and Tom Thumb patrons, if they need to get north uh, with the construction on, on 7th, they're going to need some access to the north to White Settlement. I think that's important, not to mention there's a gas well back there that needs to be accessed by emergency services. So just wanted to bring that up. This this um, discussion has been on on the radar, or I brought this up, you know, uh, I don't know, when we bought the project and started development in 13 and 2014. So it's been out there. I, I probably should have done a better job of, of surfacing that issue uh, when you guys proposed this project. But I'd, I'd like to know, you know, hopefully somebody, if you could mention that to somebody within the city, I'd like to get those discussions going again. But I think during construction, we might need to figure something out sooner rather than later, if possible. Okay, thank you. Hey, Renak, I see several um, several questions that are popping in through chat, but one thing I did want to bring up before uh, we go on to too many more questions. Uh, citywide, not just on this project, if you see trees that need maintenance or any type of that, um, and it's city and maintained, you can call our call center, uh, or even better, use the My Fort Worth app and take a photo of it and send it right to us. Uh, and and that'll get it on the list to be fixed. So it, anytime you see anything that you think isn't being maintained properly, please let, please use one of those options and let the city know. Thanks, Jeff. All right, some of the uh, questions in the chat box. Um, somebody asked for a, a zoomed in look at the plant palette that we're gonna be using in the landscaped areas. Um, and they're asking whether we have considered uh, modifying the choices based on the recent severe weather. Uh, we have not just because the recent storm was a one off. It's not a storm that we, you know, we, we would typically design for. Um, so for with such a sporadic storm event, um, we have not changed anything about our design. And another question asking, will you be able to turn left from Woolery Street at that new light onto West 7th Street? So let's scroll down there. So this is the intersection in question, um, turning left on to West 7th. Yeah, it'll yeah. be a signalized four-way intersection. So all movements will be, you'll be able to do any movement in that, within that intersection. We're not, while you're right there, uh, we had a question come in earlier about that. Um, we're going back to Tom Thumb, that entrance right behind Tom Thumb next to the railroad um, someone expressed uh -huh. concern on whether there were, we were still going to allow left turns from traffic heading east uh, across into that. Is that um, what's the plan for that? Will we still have that traffic? So you're talking about this entrance? Yeah, yeah. Anybody's heading east towards downtown, are they still going to be able to turn left? Uh, into that back parking lot in front of behind Tom Thumb. There was discussion at one point about it blocking being blocked off, but it looks to here, here like it may still remain open. Jeff, this is Jeremy. That, have... that entrance was re, was requested to be maintained because that's their entrance for the 18 wheelers. 
So, that's, so that's, yes. where Tom, that's where Tom Thumb's 18 wheel uh, deliveries have to, have to come into. Easy enough. Thank you for answering. Is there any way you could scan back to Norwood and 7th Street with this uh, this diagram? Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. Will the dash continue to run during this project? Yes, it will. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to be coordinating with Trinity Metro to uh, temporarily, temporarily relocate uh, bus stops as needed, but it will continue to run. Could I impose to scan all the way back to the West 7th uh, and bridge uh, point, please? Sure. Thank you. So this is right at the beginning of the bridge. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I think I got all of the questions from the chat box, right, Jeff? Let me know if there are any that I missed. I'm looking through right now. Sorry, I, I had my mic muted because my clock was chiming and when I bother Sorry. everybody. Uh, we had a thank you from the M&O Grill and the Foundry District. Thank you. Talk about planting. I don't see any more questions. Does anybody else on the line have any additional questions that we can answer? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm glad you were all able to make it. Um, you know, if you guys do have any questions, once again, this is my contact information. Please email me or give me a call. I'd be happy to help any way I can. Um, if not, you know, you'll get the recording of this, um, this presentation to be able to share with whoever you need to. And we're looking forward to get started on this project. Thank you for joining everybody. Thank you for the presentation. My pleasure.